MZTV. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the juxtaposition of religion and politics. It's everything we've been talking about. It's everything I've been talking about for 25 years. And it is unfolding precisely as we thought it would. Wow. We're in for a ride, and it's going to be an enjoyable ride. This is Martin Zender. Welcome to MZTV. This has to happen. And it is actually religion that is hijacking the world system, the beast system. The prostitute is sitting on the beast. The prostitute is riding the beast. The beast is the political arrangements at the end time and the woman replete with blasphemies on her head is the most popular religion in the world which is christianity which of course has a pact with israel and the whole thing is happening right in front of our eyes it happens in the election that we just saw and you saw that video clip It is an amalgamation of religion and politics, which is illicit. Religion and politics are going to come together in the millennial kingdom because Jesus Christ is a king and a priest. But before that happens, we are going to see the imitation religion and politics marriage. And it has been forming for years. It has been set up and building for years and again i was teaching this on grace cafe back in 1999 that the final deception the last world kingdom has to be a religious kingdom in order to fulfill daniel chapter 7 when daniel sees four beasts coming out of the sea and it turns out these beasts are the four major religions of the earth buddhism hinduism islam and christianity the western beast The monstrous is full of iron teeth and copper claws, which is an armed empire. And you can surely say that Christianity is an empire. And for a long time, this religion has longed to involve itself in government. It should never do that. Really, it should never do that. But the call has been going out for years with the religious right that uh, more and more the call has gone out. We need to take a hand in politics. We need to preach politics from the pulpits, and they have been doing that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with going out and voting and supporting your candidate, but when it is being melded, married with politics i mean with religion uh, it's uh it's a bad thing what what is a good thing is the separation of church and state religion and politics religion and politics church and state separation is good and it has been good but now these lines are being dissolved as i been predicting for 25 years and religion has hijacked politics and the conservative moves movement is the only uh, host that could really be used by the religious right i'm going to read an article to you that i wrote back in uh 2009 and you will be amazed and thrilled folks it's game on we are going to see some amazing things now i mean not like we have not seen amazing things can you see how the stage was set for three and a half almost four years with this terrible terrible government in the united states that has made the united states a laughing stock the terrible biden harris administration and it takes supernatural stupidity to put Kamala Harris as the head of your party and then to choose Walls from Minnesota Tim Walls to choose him as your running mate it takes supernatural stupidity to put these two clowns 
to pin your hopes and dreams on these two people. It's like one of the worst possible people you can pick. And no one left to their own devices would possibly pick these two. And yet God needed this dynamic slash disastrous duo to be an easy pickoff for uh, Donald Trump. But before that, even before that, with the corrupt bag of rotting oatmeal, also known as Joe Biden, uh, to have a senile person in the presidency, only God could do this. Only God could make a political party put these people forward as the best and the brightest. It is an amazing thing to see. It is divine. And what else is divine is the withering attacks that Donald Trump has withstood for eight years. I mean, ever since he came down the escalator in 2015 to announce his candidacy for president, this man has been brutally, brutally persecuted. Uh, I don't think any politician in world history has been so systematically investigated and targeted and then shot at and actually hit. I mean, that was the moment, really, when everything congealed, everything came together. When Trump has the blood streaming down his face and he stands up, not knowing if there's a second or a third shooter and he says, fight, fight, fight. That is, that became the rallying cry of this, of his campaign. And it was an amazing thing to see. I, I don't know of any other human being that could have withstood the opposition of every power on the earth. Every, and not just in the United States, but every media power every legal power, every governmental power on the earth targeted this man to destroy him, and they couldn't do it. And then in the wisdom of God, we were treated to an intervening administration that would assist Donald Trump by wrecking the country to such a disastrous and obviously stupid degree that the world would see the truth, that a, a, a majority of the people would see the truth. It took Satan overplaying his hand, like Satan always does. Evil always overplays its hand constantly. And this is necessary to create the contrast and boy, what a contrast was created to the point where even people who don't like Donald Trump, even people who hate Donald Trump, say to themselves, well, anything's better than the madness of the other side and the, the very insane things they have tried to force feed us. And normal people, rational people, Look at the things that the left has been forcing, force feeding everyone, and they say enough. Enough is enough. I don't care what I think about Trump. We got. There's got to be an alternative to this. And there you have it. God is forcing everyone into their corners to play their parts. Everyone has their role to play. A miraculous, stupid administration followed by a miraculous survival of a miraculous man. Really who fuels himself on Big Macs and Coca-Cola and has more endurance, more energy than someone half his age, only needs three or four hours of sleep a night. I mean, this guy puts the Energizer bunny to shame. And here we are. It has been perfectly set up. And now, folks, I want you to enjoy what's going to happen now because what we have here is the white horse writer. Let me read to you from Revelation chapter 6, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, verse 2. And I perceived, and lo, a white horse, 
Now, you notice that later in the book of Revelation, there's another white horse, but this is Christ coming. This is the coming of Christ, this, the fabled and prophesied second coming. What we see here is a false Christ, and yet he too is on a white horse, a white horse, and he who is sitting on it has a bow. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, I see Donald Trump as the perfect candidate for the man of lawlessness because of his embracing of religion. It's all fake. It's all false. Of course, I know that. But this man's endurance and his power, the respect he has around the world, he's the most famous man on the planet. And politically, he is the most powerful man on the planet. Let me say that again. Politically, Donald Trump is the most powerful man on the planet Earth. Name me anyone who's even close, a close second. Is that not significant in the times we are in? We are in the final months, I believe, of Millennium 6. That's why I've been saying prophetically Trump has to win. You've heard me say that for months now. Prophetically, Trump has to win. Or else we're going to start another cycle over again? No. No. It is the time is now. And that's exactly what happened against all odds, really, against the indictments and the conviction, even and the assassination attempts. The guy was supposed to be in jail Tuesday night, but instead he was on a podium accepting the presidency of the United States. Ooh, ooh that's not what the left wanted to happen. But it's what God wanted to happen. And again, people say to me, Martin, you think Donald Trump's the Antichrist, but you love the guy? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Right now, he's not the Antichrist. He's not the man of lawlessness now. He's Donald Trump, and he's going to fix the crap that's been happening in this country. The country is broken. Trump's going to fix it, and we're all going to love it. You need to just relax and love what's about to happen. It's part of the white horse rider agenda. And I perceived, lo, a white horse, he who is sitting on it has a bow. He has weapons of war behind him. I mean, A.E. Nock suggested here in his commentary on Revelation that the bow spoke of an, an offensive military weapon. When you have a bow, what do you shoot with it? An arrow. Now, we don't fight with bows and arrows, we fight with missiles that do kind of have the same kind of an arc. You know, you take a, a bow, you take an arrow from a, from a bow, like, bing, it, it kind of flies like this, like, like, watch, watch, the, like, like this, and then you have nuclear warheads that also kind of go like this, like this, but it's peace through strength. It's the threat of these weapons that keeps the world at peace, peace through strength. That's how you deal with tyrants. You let them know that we're armed to the teeth and we will destroy you. That holds tyrants at bay because they don't want to be destroyed. Oh, they have their wealth and their and their concubines and their and their grapes and their kingdoms and their gold cars. They don't want to be bombed. They don't want their houses to be incinerated. So they will obey the strong man. That's what keeps peace. That's why the first term of Donald Trump, we had no war. No war. Because he's strong. People feared him. That's what you want in a leader, seems to me. The last administration, the guy who's currently president for yet a few short months, um, is not strong. The definition of weak and stupid. And so the world laughs and our enemies take advantage of us. This is not so hard to figure out, to understand he who's sitting on it has a bow, and to him was given a wreath. A wreath. A wreath is something you give conquerors. Oh, what do you know? And he came forth conquering, and that he should be conquering. Isn't that strange wording there in verse 2 of Revelation 6? And he came forth conquering, and that he should be conquering. Crazy me. I believe this speaks of the two administrations of Donald Trump. He came forth conquering in 2016 and that he should be conquering. Four years later, he's back, and he is going to conquer corruption. And we are going to love it. Who would not love to see the world's worst criminals come to heal, be subject to righteous law, 
to be stopped. I'm not going to sit here and list all the, the political evils we've endured for four years, but I think it's fair to say that we will enjoy watching this man fix things. They broke it, and he's going to fix it. It sounds a lot like what God did. If I can make this comparison, I don't mind doing it. At the disruption of the world. God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became a chaos and vacant. Then the Spirit of God moved upon the water, and he brought things out of the chaos. This is what happened. Chaos was created for a display of the power of recreation. Make America great again. And as America goes, so goes the world. I apologize to other countries for this. Don't take it personally. It's just that I don't know. We're a powerful country. I don't know. I mean, it's a God thing. I'm not saying this country is righteous. I'm just saying the form of government is the best form available to humans. It's not perfect. All government systems are going to be destroyed by Christ. Don't get me wrong. But a representative government of the people, by the people, and for the people that uh, keeps government small and and uh, seeks to put safety measures in place to avoid tyranny, that's a pretty good government because the trend of the human race is tyranny. That's the trend. That's what tends to happen, right? Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. And so it came forth conquering and that he should be conquering. And that's what you're about to see, that he should be conquering. And we are going to love it. Financial, economic boom, security, peace, and the wars and to government corruption, people who are self-serving. Believe me, this guy is not self-serving. If he was self-serving, he never would have gotten into politics. This is the only politician we've ever seen who did not need to get into politics. He had a perfect life, a beautiful life, beautiful wife, beautiful life, rich, and he did not need to get into politics. And he sure as hell didn't need to do it again after what they did to him between 2016 and 2020, oh my God, what they did to that guy. Any normal person would have said, okay, that's enough. I did what I could. It was a pretty good run until the scam hit, and so I'm out. No, 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 not this guy. It is supernatural, I am telling you. I'm not saying that the man is supernatural. I'm saying that he's endued with supernatural ambition and power and strength and fidelity and I mean, he's the cleanest politician there's ever been because no one's been more investigated and they can't get anything on the guy. They have to make shit up that doesn't stick because of shit. Shit usually sticks, but not to this guy because of Teflon Don, they call him. It's a miracle. What you're watching is just an anomaly. An anomaly. But why not? It's time for it. I said at the beginning of this program that... Religion, that is, the woman, would hijack the wild beast. Let's read Revelation 17, and then I'm going to quote myself from 2009, and then I'll call it a show. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Revelation chapter 17. And one from among the seven messengers who have the seven bowls came, and he speaks with me, saying, Hither I shall be showing you the sentence of the great prostitute who is sitting on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth commit prostitution, and those dwelling on the earth are made drunk with the wine of her prostitution. Verse 3, And he carries me away in spirit into a wilderness. And I perceived a woman, here it is, I perceived a woman sitting on a scarlet wild beast replete with names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads and ten horns are end-time political alignments. This is the wild beast. And the woman that is apostate, you could say the woman is apostate Israel or the descendants of apostate Israel. It's apostate religion. Of course, as you know, I've believed for three decades that Christianity is apostate Israel, remnants of the lost ten tribes. 
They carry the name of Christ, but he's a false Christ. The name of God, it's a false God. And we know that all their teachings are wrong. And at the beginning of this video, you saw them singing their hymns. And none of them believe anything they're saying. It's a beautiful hymn, How Great Thou Art. Beautiful hymn brings tears to my eyes. And yet none of them mean it. But it's a show of... Well, it's a show of false... It feels sincere to them, but it's actually a false worship of a false god. Still brings tears to my eyes because it does that when I focus on the words. When I in awesome wonder, oh Lord, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hand has made. Oh, phew, the power of God. And yet these people who think he's an eternal tormentor singing about him, that part kind of takes me off. So the woman is sitting on a scarlet wild beast replete with names of blasphemy. So for years I've been saying that the end time deception has to have religious overtones. This is why I knew that Harris Walls couldn't be a, the president. Harris couldn't be. Could It couldn't be because it's just too obviously evil, too obviously stupid, very unreligious. It's atheistic, in fact. And, and so this was the farthest thing from the end time deception. So I knew that Donald Trump had to defy all odds and become the president again or somebody else. But I knew that they couldn't be it. This ticket couldn't be it. This is not your ticket. And so sure enough, sure enough. So I want to read you something I wrote in 2009. In fact, it was October 16th. No, it was 2010. My mistake. October 16th, 2010. This is volume two, issue 20 of the Clanging Gong News. You can find all the issues, all the back issues of my Clanging Gong News at martincenter.com. Scroll down, look at the left-hand side of the page. This edition was called Here Comes the Beast. 2010, 14 years ago, if my math is correct, conservatism carries the virus of man-made religion. That's the name of this article. Conservatism carries the virus of man-made religion to become the driving force behind the satanic but sterilized one world government, the deadly virus of self-righteousness, that is Christianity requires a host that can do for it what it cannot do for itself, which is propel it into politics. The host will be conservatism. This is not because conservatism is bad, but because it is the only ideology taking moral stands and promoting values. The left does not promote, take moral stands or promote values. Not at all. It's the opposite. A key difference, I continue in this article, a key difference between conservatism and liberalism, this is not classical liberalism. I, in fact, should say leftism here. So I will just substitute leftism for liberalism. A key difference between conservatism and leftism is the view of human nature. Liberals, leftists, align themselves with the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who proposed that human nature is basically good. Conservatives, on the other hand, espouse the scriptural principle that there's no one righteous, no, not one. Leftists push for human autonomy and reliance on, quote, the guiding light within, kind of like the Woodstock philosophy there, whereas conservatives recognize the need for a fundamental code of ethics, whether this be God, parents, or civil authority. Conservatives recognize good and evil. Liberals don't. Leftists, I should say. To leftists, there are, there are no truly wicked or lazy people. There are only victims of oppression. Likewise, despotic dictators are actually decent people, according to the leftists. Despotic dictators are actually decent people. All they need is understanding and a good talking to. Conservatives are right about human nature. Leftists are wrong. That is, conservatives, there's no one righteous, no, not one, pointing to the righteousness of God. Whereas the leftists say that we're all just pretty great and we can make it on our own we're not weak we're not ignoble we're not stupid we're not clay we're certainly not clay and so we don't need god thus conservatism needn't necessarily become host 
to a misguided morality. But you can see why liberalism can't accommodate it. Conservatism contains within it moral values and a belief in God. It, it's sewn in. And I, I, I don't exactly know why, but it is. They're natural bedfellows. Conservative forms of government, small government, human autonomy. I'm not talking about free will here. I'm here. I'm talking about letting people live their lives without government interference or with as little government interference as possible this philosophy of government comes with and it is not sold separately from a belief in god for whatever reasons last paragraph there was nothing wrong with the 9-11 airplanes it was the people boarding them who turned them into instruments of evil likewise conservatism left alone brings out the best in people, I believe. But it is ripe for hijacking and destined, I wrote this 14 years ago, and destined to become the unwitting carrier of Christian jihad. Conservatism is the host, the unwitting carrier of Christian jihad. The Christian war on immorality, the Christian war on these stupid people just don't believe in God. And they believe, of course, that they have the righteous mandate to impose their religion on other people. And maybe this is where Elon Musk comes in with the technology necessary to corral people into this beautiful, righteous political alignment, this new political alignment that has destroyed the obvious evil on the earth and it's going to do that and we're going to enjoy it. it it needs to happen it will destroy the obvious evil or at least limit it or at least cripple it and it will become a wonderful shining thing that many will be invited into and christians will love it but yet you have to have a certain identifying mark to be a part of it it's just just it's, it's just, it's just a small thing. You'll want to do this because it makes you an accepted part of this wonderful movement that has God as its center and Christ as its fabric, as its leader. But in fact, Christ will not be the leader of that movement, but Satan himself, who, as we know, disguises himself as a messenger of light, he will be the true leader of it, and it will become a very dark thing. It will become the beast of revelation. But until then, it will be enjoyable. Pardon me for saying this, but I think you might feel the same way. It will be enjoyable to watch these evil people get their comeuppance. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And Donald Trump is not technically the Antichrist. The Antichrist comes when Donald Trump is killed and then comes back, ostensibly from the dead, at which point it's no, not him any longer, but he's been inhabited by a demonic spiritual being. So it's not really him, so we can't really technically say that, well, Donald Trump is the Antichrist. But his body will be the host of the Antichrist. This is what I believe. That's why I'm sharing it with you. And... May God get us the hell out of here as soon as possible.